Hey there. <clears throat> We're gonna draw this um, and paint this polar bear. Now, we'll see how long it takes um, to do the first part. This might be a two-part series because it is a little time consuming and I want you to get the most out of it. So what I've done is I have used a um, piece of cardboard um, egg carton and I've cut this part out so that you now see this part, but you wanna make sure once you've cut it out that it's level, it's even around all of the edges and it's not really sticking out. So you kind of can fit it on the paper and see if you need to make any adjustments. So that's what I've used. So I've used this part of the egg carton and I've already painted it white for my bear's face. Now, um, and so this one does seem to be a little uneven and get some help with your scissors and have an adult cut it out or just be very careful yourself when you cut this to make sure that it's flat around the bottom so that it'll fit nicely and snugly onto your paper background or cardboard background. Now, um, I've also, see I've done this all in cardboard, so you're gonna need a few materials. First of all, you're gonna need the egg carton. You're gonna need an, a thin piece of cardboard. I have black and white paint that I've already got ready in my paint cup. And I used some raffia, but I was thinking of other materials you could use. You could use, um, you could use fabric for the scarf. You could use um, ribbon. You could use yarn. So there are all kinds of options, and that's what I really love about problem solving when you're doing your artwork. Um, I used tempera paint to paint the background of my framed bear, and then I used drawing paper to, to dry out the sweater. And so those are the materials I've used. Now, this one is on a piece of cardboard, and it's not that thick, so I've been just, you know, from purchases that I've gotten in the mail or, you know, any kind of boxes. Like this framed part is also thin cardboard, but you know, this could be from a box. You could use a box or a cereal box or any other kind of box. And these are nice supports for the project that you're going to be doing. Now, I recommend you use markers. Now here's some of the marker colors that I've chosen for my next bear's uh, sweater. And I just want to make sure that I've got the colors that I want and I might add a couple more. It all depends um, when I do my polar bear. So on this one I have a thinner piece of cardboard. I painted it in black tempera paint. Now, if you don't want to paint it in black, you could use any other tempera paint that you have and then uh, paint it a nice um, even paint color. And then I drew a frame going around it. Now, you could take a screenshot of some very simple frames that you could add around the edges of your painted cardboard to frame your bear. Here is some ideas, and then here are some more ideas. You could also take a screenshot of that, um, or probably make up your own framed uh, bear. But these are to give you some ideas. Now, um, and I just wanted to show you a couple of other things that I've done I using egg carton. So I use the taller part that separates the eggs. And so you can see that's like for a longer snout. And with that, I created a deer. 
And in this one, I used paint to paint that part, this part of my egg carton. And I used a thin piece of cardboard and I used markers. And then I created the horns with some skinnier pieces of cardboard that I cut out. That's one idea. And then this one's another idea that I did. And this is a hedgehog. And uh, again, I used black paint and then just scalloped the edges to make it a little fancier and then use some white uh, paint pen to kind of embellish that, which I think I'm gonna go back over it with some white tempera just to make it a little thicker. And so as you can see, you can do so many fun things with recycled materials. So I'm gonna move my bear over and I'll just put him right here so you can see him. But I'm gonna use this other um, framed, um, piece of black paper or painted black cardboard sorry and show you the process and how I did this so what I did was I found a thinner piece of cardboard and I want to use cardboard because I, I like the thickness of it and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my snout of my polar bear onto the paper and then I'm going to draw out so you're going to need pencil to do this I'm going to draw out like the top of the head which is a nice curved line um, make sure it's high enough so you kind of have to play with it once you now make sure after you paint this you got to let it dry sufficiently before you start um doing this okay now the ears of the polar bear are kind of not too too big so you're going to make your ears and then you're just going to hold this down and i'm going to curve out for the side of the head the bottom of the head and then just the rest of the head okay so I've already got that drawn out and I kind of have to visualize what it's gonna be like on my rectangle piece. Now you can do it on a square piece of cardboard like I did with this example, um, but I just wanna show you another example. Maybe you don't have as big of a piece of a cardboard as um, you might have lying around. So after I've drawn out the basic shape of the head and as you can see um, I can clean that up a little bit with my eraser and then I think it's good to start to cut out so I'm going to move my snout get my scissors and then I'm going to cut this out on the smaller piece of cardboard that I already drew this on What I'm going to do after I'm done cutting this out is I am going to paint it white with my tempera paint. I know it's white already, but I want to have a little bit of that texture to absorb um, the black paint that I'm going to need for the, for the ears and the eyes. So once you've got your bear head, um, I'm gonna place it onto my now framed piece of cardboard. So remember, you're gonna paint your cardboard whatever color you'd like. This one I did in blue. And there are other things you can do to your project. Like if you wanted to have snowflakes, I'd make them tiny, I'd take my time and I might want to practice them before I actually draw them and paint them onto my back, <clears throat> my background. Now, um, I also need to get an idea for my sweater. So I've already got a piece of just my heavier mixed media paper and I'm just gonna trim it a little bit because I know I'm not gonna need it that wide. I have to make sure it fits within the frame. So. I would make my frame first, and that's this frame, and I used 
a chalk pen for that. I used this that I found. Oh, I'm not really sure where I found this. I've seen them at um, the chalk markers. I've seen at um, Target and they're pretty reasonable and um, they're great to paint on top of paint, but you could also use a color pencil. And I also picked up some color pencils. You could use metallic. I did happen to get two that I had at the art store, but if you wanted to use a metallic pencil, I would definitely go with that if you didn't have a chalk marker on hand. So now I need to see um, where I'm gonna be placing the sweater. And I need to place it inside my border to make sure it'll fit. So I have to keep trimming it a little bit more. And this bear may not be as broad as the bear that I did before. Almost there. So kind of keep testing to see if it'll fit inside your your background. Okay, so I think that'll fit. And maybe I'll make this longer. I could drop this down a little bit lower so that I won't have such a long torso on my bear. So you need to make that judgment call when you're doing your work. So I'm gonna trim this up a little bit to see. Ah, needs to be trimmed a little bit more. And it's always good to keep trying it, keep testing, make sure that it'll fit inside the framed part of your um, your frame, your border. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do before I start painting the head is I'm gonna draw out a sweater with my pencil and I see that this fits in really well, so I'm happy about that. And I'm just gonna go right underneath the head and draw the top part of the shoulders of my bear. So as you can see, I'm kind of lightly sketching that out and before I start to trim it up a little bit. And then with my sweater, I can add some kind of neat designs. So you could just have rows that are curved because um, it is a form, it's, um, the body is a cylinder, so you want to be able to create that shape of the bear, the form of the bear. So you could add some curved lines. If you didn't want stripes on your bear, you could add just other simple patterns, but you can kind of just sketch out what you had in mind for the sweater. Now, I'm gonna trim this up a little bit and I'm gonna paint my bear's head and then I'm gonna work on my sweater until my bear's head is dry. So basically this is gonna be my sweater and I wanna be able to see where my, sh my arms are. So I'm gonna also place my arms on my bear. Let's see. And I think I'll just use a black Sharpie marker. It's my go-to when I do my drawings. And I'm gonna add my arms. There we go. Now, I'm gonna put this aside, put my sweater aside. And now I'm going to, I'm gonna move this too because I don't want it to get painted on. And I'm gonna add some paint to my bear's head. So just simply use, make sure you don't see any eraser lines, clean it up. and then start to paint. And make sure that you paint it evenly, that it's smooth and not chunks of paint on your head. And you can see the cardboard is like an ivory color and I'm painting it with the pure white tempera. I have this particular tempera at home, so I'm just using that and I'm going to do a nice even coat on the head and then let that dry. And 
and you can tell it's dry when it stops being so shiny. So once it starts to be all like a matte without shine, then it's ready. And you can put more than one coat on the head of your bear. And I like the cardboard because it's sturdy. Um, I'm not so concerned about the sweater. I just want the head to be a little bit sturdier since I am connecting a bigger piece of cardboard to it, which is this snout. So I'm gonna let this dry. And then it'll be good to go once it's dry. And then I can glue it onto my background. So I'm gonna let that dry. And then make sure you wash your brush properly. And as you can see in this example here, in a lot of designs for sweaters I mean, that you see over the holidays, I mean, you could do a, oh gosh, you could do, um, you know, an ugly sweater <laughs> that they call for the holidays. You could add all kinds of holly or whatever patterns or designs you want. Um, that's fine. And then what you can do is use your black Sharpie and you can outline some of the stripes if you've chosen to do the stripes. And I'm gonna do some thick and thinner stripes with my um, design. And you know, if you have too much or not enough, you can kind of make a judgment call. So I'm gonna do a double curve line here and then it doesn't have to connect to the arms, but you want the stripe to kind of line up with the arms, which is fine. Okay, and then I have this one. So I have kind of a variety of widths on my sweater, but like I said, you can do any kind of sweater you want. So there's just no um, limit to some of the ideas that you can add to your sweater and do you have to do the same exact sweater I'm doing? Absolutely not. You can do any kind of design you want. It's really up to you, but I like to give you as many ideas as possible so that you are good to go when you start doing your own bear. Now you could do this as a, um, uh, a panda bear, but polar bears are pretty popular this time of year, obviously, because it's winter. And then see if there are any more designs you want to add to your sweater. I always use a piece of paper to cover any table that I'm doing my artwork on. And you can also test the colors on that as you're working. So I've chosen these colors right here um, that I'm gonna use. And I'm going to then start coloring in my sweater. I'm taking my time. And you can also use an eraser to clean up any of the pencil lines that you've got still showing. So you can use a an eraser and clean that up. Hold your paper down with one hand and clean it up. And then you can continue coloring in. Make sure when you're using markers or paint that you do have something underneath them when you're working so that they don't get onto the surface that you are working over. And I see some pencil lines right here that I need to clean up. And then I'm going to 
continue on. I chose these colors because I think they'll pop when I glue it onto my surface for my background. And I did do um, a frame in the green, so I want this to kind of pick up that green that I've got on the background of my bear. So kind of think about it. Don't randomly pick colors and unless you just want it as colorful as possible. That's an idea. But think everything through before you just randomly color in and think of the choices that you're making. And remember, it's okay to make mistakes. That's all part of the process. And just be easy on yourself. It's all okay. All right, so I might wanna add this further down on this sweater. You could use colored pencils if you don't have a marker color that you like. The thing about colored pencils though, if you're coloring in colored pencil, Add some pressure to the pencil so that the color will be um, standing out. And you've made a conscious choice of what you're using. And if you are coloring on color pencil, press harder on the pencil so that the color will be definitely bright and bold. And you can also use a crayon um, for these as well, or crayons. As you can see, while I'm coloring, I'm staying inside my lines and taking very care, much care as to coloring it in. Okay. And I always make sure you cap your markers very carefully. You don't want any dry markers if you're using them. There's nothing worse, especially if they're new. You to take good care of your materials. It's important. All artisans take care of their tools and their materials. Okay, move this down. You know, and you can kind of step back and see how you like it. And so far I have three different color greens on this. And it's good when you use a Sharpie because it's not bleeding when I color over the Sharpie black color. It's permanent, just be careful not to get it on your clothes. All right, so now I've got that colored in. And I think, let me see if I have, I'm gonna add a little pink to this. And you can add an accent color if you wanted to just use all of one color family. And as you can see, while I'm coloring, I'm always holding down the paper with one hand carefully on, on the edge so that it doesn't twist and get wrinkled. You want a nice flat surface. And maybe I'll just add that also in here. So I think it's coming along nicely. And I think I'll do one more color for the bottom. I'm gonna look at some of the markers I have. Ah, here's one more. Let's have a nice range of different greens.
I don't know about you, but we've been having hot cocoa and of course, a lot of marshmallows. Um, this time of year, it's getting colder and it's been a lot of fun to just kind of treat ourselves to having a special cocoa drink. Okay, almost done. And as you can see, while I'm coloring this in, I am making sure that I get any little white spaces because I want it nice and neat, except for any areas in the pattern um, that I've already done for my sweater. So now that the sweater is done, I'm going to place it onto my, oh, I just noticed one little spot touch it up. I'm going to just place it to see how it looks. I also miss this part there. And now I'm ready to add my bear's head. So you want to position it carefully. And then we'll do this now. Okay, so I like the way this looks and Right now I'm gonna glue this on. So I happen to have, I'm just gonna mark where I've, whoop, you can use a pencil and just kind of mark where the um, sweater is, the edge of the sweater, so that you know where to put it after you've glued it. Now, if you don't have tacky glue, which I do recommend you eventually get if you don't have any, you can use Elmer's and that will work fine. I just not as strong as my tacky glue is, but it still works pretty well. Um, I wouldn't recommend taping it, and I certainly wouldn't recommend using a glue stick. Glue sticks are fine for certain projects, but just not for this. And I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna glue all the edges of my sweater and then add some glue going around. So I'm not soaking it in the glue, but I am making sure that the edges are glued. And then I'm gonna be careful to lift it up and then place it onto my background and kind of line it up where I made my little mark for my pencil so that I know where it goes, okay? So I'm gonna put this aside for just a second and I'm gonna show you what to do with the snout. So I'm gonna place this onto oh, the head. And I see it needs a tiny bit more trimming before I do that. So I'm gonna trim a little bit and make sure that your paint is dry before you make any trim trimming. And I'm trying to make sure this is nice and even. Okay. And then you're going to place it onto the head. So you want a little bit on the bottom showing and of course a little bit at the top. And I think that looks pretty good. You can just again, mark it with your pencil and you can always touch up after you've um, glued it. You can touch it up with some white paint. Now I'm using my glue carefully going around just the edges of my dry egg carton piece <laughs> and then you're going to line it up with oh, it's a little too high move it down clean it up make sure you have room on all the sides and like I said you can use a dish rag um, or a white rag that you can just keep reusing so that you don't have to go through a lot of paper towels now um, that should then eventually dry and then you can start painting, but I don't have another example to show you. So I'm just going to use a tiny bit of black tempera to do the inside of my ears and I'm holding down my snout. Make sure that you've got a good brush and that it's not fraying like this one seems to be doing. You may have to switch brushes. 
make sure you've got a nice tip on it. That's why it's important to take care of your tools. Okay. And then you can move it around and then do the inside of the other ear. And you can see I'm not doing a lot, just a tiny bit. And then painting that in. And then I'm going to paint the eyes on either side like I have on this sample. So I'm just going to add the eye on each side of my snout of my egg carton. Okay, and you could do bigger eyes if you want or leave them like that. They're very close to the edge of my carton, my cardboard. And you can always kind of go in and make them slightly bigger. And then I'm just going to add the nose. So hold your cardboard down. And I'm going to paint inside here. It's a little tricky because it's so bumpy. You could probably even use a black Sharpie if you didn't want to paint it. And then I'm going to make a nice kind of black oval or maybe circle. And I'm going to do a short line and then you can kind of make a little curve. And you can also clean that up with some white paint if you made it too thick or too thin. You could add more paint in there. You don't want to overdo it because then it gets too frustrating. <laughs> and then we're ready to glue this onto our sweater. So again, I'm going to hold it very carefully. I'm going to use my glue going all the way around the edges. Make sure you don't want it to lift up. So you want to make sure that you get plenty around the edges of the head. I may have to be careful because my paint is still wet. Ah, no, nope, didn't smudge anything, thank goodness. Okay. You may want to just wait for it to dry before you <laughs> glue it on. And then just place it carefully onto your cardboard background. Isn't it cute? Now, I happen to have some extra uh, raffia. Let's see, maybe I'll use pink. You can use any color you want. You don't have to use raffia, but that's what I have on hand. Use whatever you've got. Don't run out and buy something. It's not really necessary. Just kind of look through your fabric. Look through your yarn, and I'm sure you can fashion something that's pretty cool. Now I'm just opening this up. And... Then I'm gonna have to cut some that's thinner to go around the neck. There, I got it all open. Now I'm gonna cut it in half. So it kind of gives you an idea of how much I'm using. And I might have to trim it a little bit more so I can get some around the neck. So use whatever you have, kind of see how much length that you've got. And I'm going right underneath my bear's head and I might even cover up some of this sweater and so I think I'll just add some zigzags you can make it fringe like and maybe I'll just do that so I'm fringing my material and I'm going to add some glue going around the neck at the bottom of the head and then just simply make sure your fingers are clean and that you can glue this on and kind of glue it flat unless you want part of it to be lifting up. And then you could do one more piece that is kind of wrapped since it's around the bear's neck. You can just do a smaller piece at the side here. Depending on how much you want on your bear's neck. I think that'll work. So I just wanted to
clean that up a little bit and then I will just add some really just to the end ah, of my scarf and then place it right on the corner here and then I'm going to let it dry. So I like the way that the material is kind of lifting up to give it that dimensional look. And if you wanted to add, like I said, any snowflakes, you could add some snowflakes. I recommend you, you know, kind of draw them out first before you do anything um, to your final piece of uh, art and then add them or not. I mean, you could, I have some like extra silver uh, paper that's adhesive and I could make some snowflakes or stars and put them in the background. Be creative with what you have and have a lot of fun. Okay, thanks so much and I'll see you soon.